How Hi. compassionate high achievers prevent stress-induced burnout? Interview with Dr. Brianna Gaynor. Are you a compassionate high achiever, feeling the desire to achieve more so you can make bigger impact and bigger income, but stress keeps getting to you from time to time? Are there simple tips you can apply to build your resilience and avoid the stress-induced burnout coming in your way? Yes, there are. And our guest today, Dr. Gaynor, will share her most powerful tips that have helped her and her clients. If you'd like to learn these simple tips that you can easily apply in your life right away, then stay tuned. You are watching Happy and Healthy Mind program, episode number 93. Our guest today, Dr. Brianna Gaynor, is a PsyD. She's a clinical psychologist, a motivational speaker, and owner and director of Peace of Mind Psychological Services in Atlanta, Georgia. She spreads the message of building the culture of resilience, demystifying stigma of mental health, the pray to way mentality, and faith walk, which is reaching others. And I am your host, Dr. Rosina Lakhani. I help compassionate high achievers achieve more, earn more, and make the impact they are meant to make without burnout and without losing their health or career. I'm an executive coach, a corporate speaker, and an integrative psychiatrist. I believe that your mind is the software that runs the hardware of your brain and your body. Therefore, I share practical tips for your mental fitness. If you need specific medical advice, please consult your healthcare professional. But if you find this content helpful, then join our mission of eradicating preventable suffering by liking, subscribing, and sharing so more people can live their best life, achieve more, earn more, and make the impact they are meant to make. If you're joining us live, please share in the chat any questions you may have. Let's learn from our guest. Thank you, Dr. Gaina, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So why don't we start with talking about how did this topic become important in your life? Tell us a little bit about your story before and after you applied some of the tools that you're going to share with us today. Yes. So this is important to me because I'm a business owner. And so what I've come to learn in the eight years that I have owned my own practice is it is extremely stress inducing. And there are a lot of difficulties and challenges that come with the ebbs and flows of owning a business. And so for me, it was really important to prioritize my mental health and to know how to deal effectively because these are things that are going to continue to happen because being a business owner, there are just a lot of changes that you have to adjust to. And so I really felt that it was important for me to figure out what I needed to do so that I could be the best version of myself so that I can be the best practice owner, the best business owner. And I could also have happiness once I leave the office and not feel stressed all the time. And I did find that in the very beginning, I struggled with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so once you apply these tools that you're going to share, how did the life change? Well, I, I think it, it's really about being much more intentional about really recognizing what I needed and really where I needed to put my focus. I think a lot of times when it comes to stress, part of the stress is not just the thing, but it's about how we're thinking about it mm -hmm. and our perspective. Mm -hmm. So really having a different perspective, I think was one thing. And so these were the things that you applied, but let me first, before we even go in more detail of okay. what helped you, okay. let's figure out since you have been applying these tools, mm -hmm. has the stress disappeared? The stress doesn't disappear. I just deal with it differently. All right, all right. <laughs> it's always there. So, and right. that's why it's important to know what to do with it. Right. Because the truth right. is, it's not about if it's going to happen. It's about how to deal with it when it when happens. happens. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, I kind of was joking about that. You know, people think that people like you and me who are in the field helping others manage their stress people think that we don't go through stress at all. And so <laughs> I want to kind of bring out that stress never disappears. It's like, you know, it is always there. And sometimes it's more and sometimes it's less. Mm -hmm. um, but applying some of these tools help us cope with them better. Mm -hmm. So tell me, was there a time when you were not coping better? And then oh, when you apply, how, <laughs> how did the life felt different when you apply? 
there was a time when I was not applying it. I think, especially in the very beginning, mm -hmm. a lot of times when you're starting a business, it's really important to just dial in and it takes a lot of energy and effort and everything else kind of can go by the wayside. Um, but that's not sustainable long term. And so that was really, I guess, the beginning, being able to figure out how to adjust to my lifestyle, to what I'm going to be faced with has just helped me to be able to enjoy, to be able to step away, to be able to almost turn my brain off. Sometimes mm -hmm. that's not as easy, but mm -hmm. learning how to do that has made a huge difference mm -hmm. just in my ability to sleep at night because that was a big thing. Sleep mm -hmm. was a huge thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Isn't it kind of really an art to learn that skill of turning off all the pressures? <laughs> Because a lot of yeah. people who are kind of working at their job, you know, they, the job is over, they can kind of yep. close. Okay, I'm going to think about job tomorrow. But if you are a business owner, the business stays on with you and you like, you know, constantly thinking about how to improve, what to do, or this issue happen, how to improve that. It's not just about the job. It's about kind of the whole business. And it's very hard to turn off the brain at night. And so you were able to, have that separation that allowed you to be able to sleep at night. So for great. The part, yes. <laughs> yes, for the most part, yes. You are qualifying it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I also think the important thing is you think about tips and tools and what's helpful, but sometimes we can be really hard on ourselves. So being patient and knowing, okay, this was great. I didn't do so well this day. I can always pick it back up. And I think sometimes when it's all or nothing, we put ourselves in that and then we hold ourselves to the fire. We're human. It's not mm -hmm. always going to be perfect, but at least you can always jump back on and do better the next time, you know? Right, right. Yeah, that feeling that you can actually enjoy and that you can actually sleep. And it's okay if sometimes you're not able to apply the tools and okay to have difficulties from time to time. Yeah. But it's important to pick yourself up and apply these tools so you don't completely completely burn out because if at this you know at this level when you are at the point where other people are depending on you when you burn out then it's not just your life that is affected but everybody else that depends on you Absolutely. their life gets also affected and uh, like you know uh, in addition to all the patients that you could be serving so it's more important for you to maintain that ability to function to help others to make that impact and yet also maintain your ability to earn and, and survive and um, enjoy your life. So mm -hmm. wonderful. So, so why don't we kind of jump in and talk about some of the tools that help you in your life? And then mm -hmm. uh, maybe we can kind of discuss some of the things I benefit from and we'll see if, if they're kind of similar or different. Okay. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> what would be the first one? So the first one that I try to remind myself of and think about on a daily basis is why is this worth it? Why am I even doing this? Mm -hmm. And I tend to have devotional time in the morning. And I was reading something the other day and it was talking about the gift of being able, like you, you get to do that thing, whatever that thing is. And because there's a lot of things going on and all the different, all the different factors that go into place, I stopped the other day and I, I thought, wow, I get to. I get to talk to people. I get to help them with their mental health. I get to give them answers. I had a mother yesterday and I was giving her um, some diagnoses her son had and some next steps. And she was so relieved because all the things she's wondered about, mm -hmm. I verified. So mm -hmm. now she has answers. So it's a gift to be able to help people and do what I do. And remembering that and remembering why I did this in the first place, why I love this, why this is something that I'm passionate about mm -hmm. is really important on those days where I'm frustrated and all the things that could go wrong are going right, wrong. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I truly, truly can relate to that because reminding the purpose is a one major, like I say, when your purpose is bigger than your problem, then you can mm. overcome any problem. So I think that's that's important. But so how do you remind yourself? Do you do you kind of write? Do you just talk about it? Or what what do you do when you Well, I try to have time in the morning where I'm intentional about what my in I'm intentional about what my intention is for the day. So mm -hmm. what do I want to achieve today? What are the things I want to do and 
what is the impact that I want to have on people? So that's part of it. And the other part is I really try to just have moments with clients where I engage with them, where I encourage them, remembering that they are telling me something important. And I really try to be intentional about saying, I appreciate you doing this. I know this is hard. I'm a stranger. Thank you for being so brave to do this. And those kind of conversations and remembering to do that with people help remind me why this is such a big deal, especially with everything that has gone on in the last two and a half years. Yeah, yeah. So so you you use those tools, like, you know, those incidences to remind you how important it is. That's wonderful. Yeah, I do my gratitude journal in the morning. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things I write, like, you know, for three PGT, I say three good things. And one of the good things is like, you know, help 10 patients mm-hmm. or, you know, uh, looking forward to that. I'd be able to help uh, 10 people today. And so that that way people can remind them of the purpose. So when it becomes really hard, you're able to get through those times. Absolutely. That's wonderful. So reminding yourself of the purpose mm-hmm. is the first main tip mm-hmm. that you that helps you. What yes. else helps you? What is the lesson? So what I have come to learn is that there are always going to be challenges in life. As much as we wish that things could just be easy, that's just not reality. And so also looking back, so I, I, I do journal a lot. So looking back at the struggles or how I was feeling at the time, and once I've gotten through that, trying to understand what the lesson is. What was I supposed to learn and how did I grow in this season? Mm -hmm. We had a season where we really struggled to find staff. So we were kind of scrambling and probably not making the best choices because there was a desperation (laughs) to hire. And what I realized, one of the lessons in that season was it's better to work hard and have to sacrifice than to just hire someone who you don't feel good about and really kind of taking the time to be patient. And even if things didn't work out, knowing that we had enough to push forward. So really trying to understand the lesson and being patient and trusting your gut because, you know, that is always, there's always, for the most part, a feeling you have. And later you're like, oh, I know I should have. I don't want to do that anymore. The lesson is usually in, okay, I need to pause. Even if I'm not quite sure, let me let this play out. And Mm. understanding that if you could pay attention to the lessons, it'll make it a lot easier the next time. And it's really building something in you that you can't get otherwise. It's building that resilience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I really appreciate you saying season because the seasons come and go. Yes. So, but when we are in the particular season, which is difficult, it feels like it's never going to pass. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and so, so, remembering that this is a season and what is the lesson that we are learning. It's also very hard to just kind of focus on lesson in the moment, right? You Absolutely. said that afterwards you, you do the Yeah, reflection. and I think that's why journaling is important because then you can go back and understand it. So in the season that you're in, even if it's tough, you may not be able to see it. But if you're journaling and you're logging and you go back to see what the lesson was then and how you came through it and how that season ended, then it gives you more hope that, this is just the way things go and this is not forever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, when when we were going through like a really hard time a few months back, my colleague kind of sent me, like I was just at the brink and I was kind of feeling like, oh my God, it's, is it going to survive? You know, is the business going to survive? Yeah. And so my colleague sent me a text. Uh, remember, we have 100% rate of surviving through the difficulties. I love that. I love that. Yeah. It was just such beautiful things. Like, yes, you know, things have been like really, really difficult in past and we did survive. So we have 100% success rate of surviving through difficulties. We'll survive this one too. Absolutely. And, And that really helped me. So like you said, like, you know, learning from the lesson and being patient because a season is going to pass and yeah. you do the best what you can within those Absolutely. circumstances. Mm-hmm. So the number one was remembering the purpose, why mm-hmm. you are doing what you're doing. And, and, you know, sometimes it's also kind of focusing on how many people 
are you helping by doing what you're doing? Mm-hmm. You know, what is your impact? And then the second one is learning from the lesson, learning the lessons and, and being patient. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, what's the third one? Who supports me? We mm. are social beings mm-hmm. and we need each other. I think the pandemic, if that hasn't taught us anything, that should be the lesson. And so really relying on the support system who is supportive. So we can have a lot of people around us, but everyone isn't supportive in the same way. Mm-hmm. So when we're going through difficult times, it's important to rely on the people who feed us, who listen to us, who tell us about ourselves, who give us what we need and nurture us. Because there are a lot of different relationships that we have, some that we probably feed into more. Mm-hmm. And there are sometimes when those aren't the relationships we need right now. We need the people who can rally around us, hear us and help us. For me, that is my consultation group, especially when it comes to business. We all have businesses. We have all consulted together. We have gone through the trenches. We've supported each other. And there are no other people who understand what it's like to be a mental health practitioner, to have a practice, to have employees, to have contractors, and all the stress it, it that it, it can bring. And so I have a really close friend, particularly, that... I call and I talk to and we vent and it's just, there's a comfort in knowing that people are going to be there to hear you, to give you ideas and they know exactly what you're going through. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. I think people, people don't realize that you can develop that team, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Absolutely. We kind of get so, so wrapped up into what we are doing and all the, and sometimes it feels lonely And there are certain, you know, uh, niches where it is lonely, you know, you not have too many people in your, in your shoes, but if you can find a group that is even similar in some ways that you can rely on, that you can just Mm -hmm. call and just talk it out. Even, even when the solutions are coming from you, having a sounding board really helps. So yeah, yes. so build your support system and rely on that. Yeah, allow uh, them to help you. That's another thing. Sometimes we have people in our lives, but we don't actually allow them or give them to, the permission to help us. We're just constantly trying to do things ourselves. Yeah. You have to reach out to get the support. So to complain about people not helping you, but you're not actually allowing people to help you is something that I've struggled with because I grew up with a single mother. She did everything despite being sick. So I learned to just do it all. And I had to realize that's not the best way to go. And I have people who love me. I just have to let them know I need them. And they're more than happy to help me. Yeah. I see that so much, so much, especially like, you know, people who are in leadership role or, you know, they just kind of feel like they are, they are supposed to handle it all by themselves. Mm -hmm. And they feel bad asking for help. You kind of feel like, you know, I don't want to bother another person. Like yes. a lot of patients would tell me, like, I don't want to bother my family. I had uh, I had a patient who really, really needs a, a more advanced treatment, what I provide, like, you know, TMS, for which um, he, he needs transportation. And he says, I don't want to bother my wife giving me the transportation. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay. You're suffering. You're kind of yeah. thinking about killing yourself. And you're like, you know, really so depressed and there's this treatment that is available for you, but you don't want to ask your wife to um, drive you because you don't want to bother them. That's kind of the extreme. But I think a lot of people um, feel that it would be a bother if they would ask for help. Mm -hmm. But what you just said, when you ask for help, you allow them to help you. So sometimes I tell my patients like, you know, okay, you feel like it would be bother if somebody calls you in the like you know that they are going through what you are going through how do you feel if you help yeah. them and they say i feel good that i was able to help so you are depriving that person from helping you mm-hmm. or feeling good about helping you mm-hmm. by not bringing your uh, you know asking seeking their help so seeking their help also uh, allowing them to feel good about being able to help absolutely so, so that's mm-hmm. wonderful all right and uh then uh, what was the next? What is kind of the long-term goal? What do you want to get out of this? What does this look like in the future? Um, sometimes when we 
own businesses or we're doing things, we're not necessarily thinking about why we're doing it. And I think that can go into what why it's worth it. But thinking about your future, thinking about how you are building to whatever that long term goal is. I know for me, one of my long term goals is to be able to encourage people about the importance of mental health. And so remembering what that is and how I can continue to work towards that is really empowering as well, because it's what I'm passionate about. It's not just the day to day. It's bigger than what I'm doing right now. It's bigger than me. It's I feel like one of the reasons or my purposes in life. And that makes me feel good to get up every morning and say, "Okay, how can I move towards that every day so that I can be a blessing? And I can be blessed too, because in doing the things that you're passionate about and considering what those goals are, you also get an advantage of being able to do that and feeling really good. And also a lot of times getting the things you need that you don't even recognize that you do. Right, right. Because sometimes like you started with what is the purpose? What is it even worth what you're doing? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, wrapping up around to how would it serve people in the future? Like, you know, how would it look? So yes, you are kind of trying to build the business or trying to having hard time recruiting or, you know, managing the staff or uh, day-to-day drudgeries. So you don't forget, like, you know, as you are building, you're building your resilience as well as you're building a business that would help more people in a long run. Um, And so like, you know, keeping that vision Uh, The purpose, why, and then the vision where you are going and how it would look, you know, in future. Absolutely. Because what you're doing right now may be just a little piece of the goal, but there may be bigger things that this is helping you build too. So remembering the immediate, but also looking to the future is also like, okay, let's keep going because we haven't gotten there yet, but look how far we've come, you know? Right. So I think this is very important that people forget how far we have come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So elaborate a little bit on that. We don't give ourselves enough credit. I know that I don't. It's interesting. I've had a few, um, I feel like we're always interviewing. So we're always interviewing for (laughs) something, but I've actually had a few people come in and, you know, when it's the time of the interview where I, you know, do you have any questions for us? Mm -hmm. One of the things I've heard a few times, and I'm just reflecting on this now as we're talking, is, you know, people ask me how long the practice has been here, what made me start it, those kind of questions. And I've had people just say, you know what, I'm really proud of you. This is awesome. And I don't think I take that in. I'm like, yeah, thank you. Okay. But you just do what you do every day and you don't think about the impact that you're making. I've also had a client recently who told me that there was a school that her child goes to and that they were very happy that we were doing an evaluation because they feel like they're very thorough and helpful. So being able to see the impact of what I'm doing outside of the day to day is like, Oh, wow. Okay. I remember when it was just me in this small little room. And now there are times when I actually will be in the office by myself and I just stop and look around and I'm like, wow, God, this is amazing. Like I would never have guessed that this would be me. So taking that inventory and just stepping back sometimes can also just encourage us, encourage our heart to keep going. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that is wonderful. That's wonderful. It's so much like one of the tools I've developed for my, you know, how I I wrote the book, Stress to Joy, and and I had the whole system of, um, you know, the coaching program and online course on that topic. And so one of the technique that I talk about, especially in my guided gratitude journal, is what I call grateful achievements. Mm. So you know how people have. Uh, I come. I grew up in a in a in a culture where you know t- being talking about your achievement would be kind of considered negative. Mm-hmm. You know, she's kind of beating her own drums, or she's like talking about or being too proud about her achievement. So I I always minimize my achievements, like. I, I didn't realize that I was doing it, but I but I always did that. I never kind of came came out and said, "Oh, I am the business owner." For like for so many years, I told people, "Don't call me the owner. I'm just one of the, one of the providers. Um, I'm the servant leader. I'm I I'm here to serve you, including you know my employees." And so I always minimize that, mm-hmm. and I realized that that was because of my culture growing up talking about yourself is considered negative. 
Mm -hmm. And even when I started doing my podcast and in the podcast, I had to say, okay, I'm this, 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 this. And so I got the feedback from, you know, some family and friends saying, you know, don't talk about all the things you do. <laughs> uh, have, have other people talk about it. That's okay. But don't, don't talk about, you know, yeah. all the good things that you do. And, you know, so again, like, you know, I come from that culture where talking about your achievements is considered negative. Mm -hmm. And so internally also you forget about appreciating all the achievements that you have gained till now. People talk about vision boards, right? Yeah. So like, you know, people think, okay, make the vision board, uh, you know, think about how, what you want to achieve in life. And so I had a patient, you know, I was working in a substance abuse treatment program and I had a patient who was feeling very depressed because she was in a very difficult situation because of her substance use. She had lost the custody of the kids and she was in the treatment program and she was like feeling very, very down and very hopeless. And so they made this uh, um, a vision board, great a vision board that, you know, that she, she may be able to do this or that, or those are her desires. But internally, she could not feel that she could achieve those goals. Mm -hmm. And so to, as I was helping her, I said, okay, well, what if you, we list all the things that you have been able to achieve? But, and I had learned that from, I don't remember who's the author of that, program. So it, it, that, that concept did not come from me. I had heard somebody about writing the achievement list before making the vision board. And that really helps to kind of realize that you have been able to achieve this, that that gives you the feeling that, yes, you would be able to achieve more. Yeah. But uh, for me, it was really hard because of this cultural block that I had for inside me. And so I said, okay, well, I really believe in the power of gratitude. I do gratitude journal. Like, you know, I teach gratitude all the time. What if I become grateful for all my achievements? Mm -hmm. So we started, okay, let's list all the achievements I'm grateful for. Mm -hmm. So that kind of allowed a little bit kind of coming beyond, I'm not saying all these things I have achieved, but that I am blessed to have been able to yes, achieve. Absolutely. And so, so then, uh, then we made the list of all the grateful achievements. And when she made all these lists of sh all the things she was grateful for, she finished high school. She was able to, you know, raise the kids several years with that, without getting into substances. She was really a great athlete. And so she was able to identify those strengths that she had. Mm -hmm. And when she did that, she felt this upliftment and mm -hmm. that hope that, yes, she can also achieve. And so allowed her to think about the future in a positive manner. So like you I said, you know, yeah. thank you. Thank you. So um, like you said, you know, acknowledge what you have achieved till now that allows you to envision what you would be able to achieve. Absolutely. So, so doing these grateful achievement list and, you know, doing it from time to time have now allowed me to, you know, when somebody was like uh, interviewing me, um, said, okay, what are your achievements? What are some of your past achievements that, that makes you a compassionate high achiever? Like you were kind of defining what is a compassionate high achiever. And so she asked me, what have you achieved? And then I was able to say, yes, I've been able to maintain a business for 19 years. I've been <laughs> able to do a <laughs> huge. I've yeah. been able to maintain this podcast for two and a half years. Oh, finishing medical school was a big achievement. You know, simple things like being able to drive, learn to drive and, and you know, settle in a new country and, you know, yes. raising kids and, you know, having a marriage more than 25 years. Absolutely. All of those things. Yeah. yeah. Simple yeah. things that we don't realize, but mm -hmm. they, are, they are achievements in themselves. And when we are grateful for those achievements, mm -hmm. it gives us the hope and that feeling of ability that we would be able to achieve more and get through the difficult times. These are just kind of the seasons that come and they go. And Absolutely. you have you have been able to get through many seasons and you will continue to be able to. Absolutely. Um, so... Yeah, so these were like, you know, wonderful tips and, you know, the time passed. And <laughs> let's well, I do have one more that I want to mention. All right. Well, yeah. Please, so please that go. is, and this is more personalized to whoever 
we're talking about, but how do I become the best version of myself? And so for me, I need to sleep. <laughs> I love to laugh. I want to enjoy good food. I want to be able to travel. What are the things that feed my soul so that I'm filled up so I have the capacity to do all the things on a daily basis? So all the self-care things that just make me feel great. So again, one of my goals every day is to laugh whether I'm making someone laugh or I'm laughing at someone, but to be able to just have those light moments. There are a lot of times at work where I'm probably the silliest one because I really love an environment where you go to work and you enjoy because you are at work for a long time. And making sure that I am traveling and taking time off. I have one day a week where I don't do any work and I have to remind myself, don't check email, not today, not today. So what are those things that you need to fill your soul on a weekly basis so that you can continue going? Because all these things are important, but we all need some downtime and being able to nurture ourselves. Another thing I love is, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but exercise. I would have never thought I'd say I love it, <laughs> but I feel the physical benefits. And when I take a week off, I feel the difference. So those are things I make sure that I incorporate on a daily basis or a weekly basis so that I just feel better and I'm ready to take on whatever life throws at me. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, I call them deposits in your emotional coping account. Yeah. So the more Ooh, deposits like you it. have, the yes. more deposits you have, the more balance you have, uh, the resilience that would allow you to deal with unexpected withdrawals in form of stress that comes. That's so like, good. Yes, absolutely. Wonderful, wonderful. So we we seem to be have many, many uh, uh, points that uh, we share. We, and I think that also brings the point that these are simple tools, but that you and me have to apply in our life on a day-to-day -day basis, yes. stressors are there, but these allow us to get through them and continue to be the best version of ourselves. Absolutely. So thank you so much for sharing all these tips. So thank before you. we wrap up, is there a one, can you wrap up your message in one or two sentences, like your best advice for our audience today? Take home message. Yes. My best advice for our audience is to remember why you're doing what you're doing. Remember how important it is. Remember to ask for help and always take care of yourself. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And if people want to reach you, how can they reach you to learn more so, about you? Yes. So drbriannagainer.com is my website. Um, I am, in addition to a psychologist and a practice owner, a speaker. So please feel free to visit the website if you... Um, want to hire. And also peaceofmindpsychology.com is my website for my practice. And we are also on Instagram and Facebook at Peace of Mind Psychology. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm sure people would get a lot, learn a lot from you. And thank you for doing all you do. Thank you. Um, thank you for doing all that you do. <laughs> thank thank you. you so much for having me on your show. You're welcome. And thank you for the gift that you have shared with our audience. So just let me tell them. Um, so uh, Dr. Gaynor has shared Rising Through Resilience, Five Things You Can Do. And that gift you can find on our website, uh, happyandhealthymind.com. So you can go over there and click the word resources and you'll be able to download all the resources shared by our guest on this program. If you are in U.S. and you'd like us to send reminders for future programs and links to resources, you can text the word JOYFUL, J-O-Y-F-U-L, to the number 38470, and we'd be happy to send you the reminders and resources. And just a reminder that my next free training, uh, it's, it's going to be a live Q&A session, um, is coming up soon. And the topic would be how compassionate high achievers can achieve more without burnout. Three evidence-based method to reverse the effect of burnout on your body, regain your energy, focus, and productivity. I hope to see you all over there. You can find more information at drrosina.com front slash webinar. Again, the name, is, um, name of the page is drrosina.com front slash webinar. And let me leave you with this question. You know, every day is a new opportunity to make a change. 
What is one small change you're going to make today? Choose it. Say, I choose that I am going to do this one thing that I learned from Dr. Gaynor or Dr. Lakani to improve my life, decrease my stress, and prevent burnout despite all the challenges that are presented in life. On that note, stay safe, happy, and healthy. Until next time, Dr. Rosina. Thank you, Dr. Gaynor.